you very much, first of all, for inviting me. Um, uh, I must say, Mihai was very um, insistent. I could never say say no uh, to an invitation to be able to to meet with you uh, and to talk with you. Uh, as uh, you can imagine, the debate in this European Parliament, as you've just said, has shifted quite dramatically uh, from a few months ago. I was just thinking myself, I am at the moment chairing uh, the plenary session on the fifth floor 55, and as soon as I entered the room myself, I said, if we did not have uh, the war in Ukraine, who would be in this room and what would be thinking? Whereas now, when you are discussing climate package, you are discussing it also in the context of what the European Union is doing um, uh, to address uh, uh, our energy dependence or independence uh, from, from Russia. This is uh, a topic that has, I think, uh, catapulted us into uh, a situation where we have to go faster, we need to invest more uh, in renewables. And I say this because there are, of, uh, uh, there are big differences between different member states, different targets that can be reached, that can't be reached by in, in some member states. We have consumers who are telling us, please, um, these decisions have to make sure that we are not the ones shouldering them um, uh, and in a way also a big difference to what uh, what has happened since the past whereas before you'd have uh, the political leaders that take the decisions uh, in Brussels, uh, in European Council, then they come home uh, and they tell you by the way we decided this. Uh, what I have realized is that now it's top down, top uh, bottom up that it is our citizens um, who are, and you as journalists who are telling us, listen, what are you going to do in order to address this war on our continent? And on this, I have to very much uh, thank you, thank your country for what you have done, uh, for stepping up. Uh, the situation is still quite concerning in Moldova as well. Um, uh, and therefore, the decisions that will take place over the next few weeks once we receive the avi from the European Commission on declaring um, Ukraine, uh, Moldova uh, and Georgia as candidate uh, countries. Uh, you probably remember, just like I remember, the big uh, leap that uh, happened when Romania was declared a candidate a country uh, and the advantages that you can already start to to reap uh, once you become a candidate country until you actually accede to the European Union. Now uh, comes the next step. Uh, I had uh, a meeting um, uh, with the Romanian Prime Minister last week, uh, and there I was asked to listen for Romania, Schengen accession remains a priority. Uh, and I can tell you, when I joined this parliament in 2013, I had spent 10 years uh, in the council, and since the accession of Romania uh, to the European Union, uh, what was an insistence and a complete support at the time from my country, but now in my institutional role, is that please don't use political uh, excuses when legally we have, and technically, we have achieved all the milestones. Uh, I think it is about time that we look at each other seriously as countries, uh, there is not one class of country and another, uh, that we do not hide behind um, uh, technicalities, but we say, look, this is the time for the European Union to really see itself as a secure uh, union, not just as an economic trading bloc, but one where we can share the common values of democracy. Uh, and hope that our our young people had what we had. I consider this with myself to be part of my generation when we looked at the European Union as that project of peace. So from my end, I can tell you in this parliament, you will find um, full support. You have a lot of friends. Um, you have great ambassadors here um, uh, in, uh, uh, in this parliament with a very, very strong voice. Uh, and that is a voice that I share and I will do everything uh, in my power to help you make that next step.